headed to Fisherville with my driver. Are you driving, buddy? Are you driving? Headed to Fishersville. Fishersville bound, what, what? Hey, buddy. I was like, I'm so sick of those guys. Well, after spending over seven hours on the road, it's time for dinner at the hotel room. We got the depot. It's one of our favorite restaurants in Stanton. Some of the best chicken tenders ever and a really nice grilled chicken as well. What is it? Who's a handsome bear dog? Do you like your bed? Do you like your hotel room bed? You're so handsome. So this is the post-breakfast coma. And he needs this to start his day. So he eats his breakfast, he crashes, and then he's ready for his day. Day two started with a breakfast in the hotel room, and then I went to our storage unit to load up the walls and load up some extra merchandise to take to the show. So I have a full van headed to the show. After that, quick lunch. Emily and I got a quick lunch in downtown Stanton, Chicano boy. Short drive from Stanton into the show. This is day two. This is actually show opening day. So this is Friday, the show opens. So the show opens at 10. They let dealers in at seven. I'm mostly set up from the day before, but not completely set up, but I have enough time to walk around outside a little bit. As you can see, the outside vendors have some really cool stuff, some really fun things, lots of signs, lots of signs. Red's about to see a buddy he hasn't seen for a while. Hey, we got somebody to, for you to meet. Beautiful. Here's my booth. Early birds are supposed to be let in, early bird buyers are supposed to be let in at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. But once the line reaches the road, they have to let them in. Once a line of cars reaches the road, the main road. So that usually happens sometime between 8 to 8.30. This time it was pretty close to 8. It wasn't completely set up. I would have liked a little bit more time to set up, a little bit more time to shop. Always want to shop a show as well as set up at a show, but I did get, I think, a pretty good looking booth. It's probably a little too full, a little too much merchandise, but that's how it goes sometimes. I did sell a few things during setup, and I bought a few things during setup, and then I bought some stuff the rest of the week. Really happy with how my booth turned out. I think, like I said, this is one of my better looking booths for the show. The high hopes for the show, I'm hoping for at least three grand in sales. And when I started doing this show in 2015 or so, it seemed like I would always do three to five grand in sales. And then it, sort of the last couple of years has dipped down. Last couple of times has been under 2000. So I'm hoping for a bounce back show, at least three grand in sales and a few good buys to take home to resell later. Here's dinner. We uh, try to eat healthy. I know people like to make fun of what I eat on the road, but what I film is, you know, one meal a week or something. But yeah, we try to eat healthy. Here's Emily making a salad in the hotel room. Not the easiest place to make a salad, but and here I am stretching my back after a long day of setup and a long day of shows. Trying to get the back stretched out. Red's helping, of course, and a delicious salad. Thanks, Dan. Um, this is a variation of the famous um, Les Gales salad from Hollywood. Here we go, here's day two. This is Saturday morning. Saturday morning is a little bit slower because they don't, uh, we don't have as many people trying to get in super early. So I had about uh, 45 minutes to an hour to walk around outside and shop. Thought I'd film a little bit, get some of these. Of course, some vendors leave after Friday. They only stay set up through Friday, but this will give you an idea of what some of the outside vendors look like. Lots of good stuff outside. There is this misconception that the outside is cheaper or less quality than the inside, and I don't think either is necessarily true um, overall, but probably from vendor to vendor, that can be true. A lot of cool stuff outside. I normally buy a few things outside and a few things inside to resell. Barbecue food truck, they always do a booming business. There is a photo of them again, and here is the uh, actual barbecue lunch. Um, not terribly healthy, but very good. Can't complain about that. Check this thing out, that's cool. My vendor across from me had that. This is my buddy Chris, Chris Evans. He always has a nice selection of uh, pottery. I love this redware piece with a make-do handle. Really, really cool piece. So if anybody is looking for a Christmas gift for yours, truly hit up Chris Evans and buy, my, buy me this. This is also Chris's booth again. I love this sign. Some really cool pottery. He always has a good selection of pottery. And a neat weather vane. Chris knows a lot about weather vanes. Whenever I get a weather vane, I usually ask Chris about it. Here's uh, some vendors from inside the building I'm at. It's a, it's a really good quality of vendors in this building. 
I'm in the new barn, which is uh, one of three buildings they have, plus the outdoor vendors. New barn has a bunch of dealers who do a lot of the wall shows that I used to do and still do. And when I first started it, there was probably five or 10 dealers from the York, Pennsylvania show that were set up in the new barn. Let's have a look at some more of Chris Evans stuff. Chris, is, uh, Chris has quality stuff and is willing to let me film in his booth. Some vendors get a little weird about filming in their booths. Check out those hooked rugs. That's a cool pair. Yes, the new barn. Lots of cool stuff in the new barn. Uh, lighting could stand to be a little bit better, but by antique show standards, the lighting's not bad at all. Um, a lot of fun stuff. Like I said, a lot of good early stuff. It leans, the show leans more country than anything, but has a wide mix of stuff. Sold piece of furniture there by the door. Another dog. That is not my dog, even though it looked a little bit like my dog. And pack out. Pack out starts and it is raining. Fun, fun times. Here we go. The bane of my existence, the walls. Renting walls costs like 400 or something a show. Buying the walls cost me like 400 one time fee. So here I am loading the walls in and out. Stupid things are heavy and awkward. But can't beat the savings. They've more than paid for themselves by now. I've used them probably eight times, eight different shows maybe. Taste of India. If we're going to go out with a bang, Taste of India is it. Oh, we love Taste of India. One of our favorite restaurants in Stanton. We got the uh, Bygone Barda, Chicken Tiki Masala, and uh, Sog Paneer. And I, of course, I read those off in backwards order, but uh, they were great. So the unfortunate thing about shows is pack out extends so long. But yes, pack out was Saturday, packed out fine, but then I gotta unload the walls into the storage unit before we make our seven hour drive back to New York where we were staying for a couple months. Um, overall, pretty decent show. One of my worst shows in terms of sales, probably my worst show here ever in terms of sales, but I bought really well. So that is certainly a big benefit. Once again, Red wants to drive. Once again, his feet do not reach the pedal. He, uh, he was enamored with these uh, road snacks we had. Very delicious road snacks. And here, here's the Coke button. This Coke button was my first buy of the show. Bought it during a setup. I also sold it during the show, which is always cool. You want to sell the stuff you buy, but you always kind of also want to take the fresh buys home and resell them later. I think I bought like 12 or 13 items and I sold two during the show. Most of which, most of my new buys did not make it out on the floor. This piece was my first buy at the show during setup. Not a lot of money, kind of neat. It's got a, a turtle attacking the snake, about to bite the snake. Not super early, but early enough. It's got a nice look. Bought this. Have this for a client. Kind of cool thing. Except these two pieces. My girlfriend likes owl so i'll probably give that to her and then i have a client who also likes hawks so try to sell him that one bought this really really nice uh sandwich glass cologne great color unfortunately paid a little too much for it didn't really look up comps before i bought it paid the 135 right around what it's worth so not, not a great buy this is my most expensive purchase of the show. Leatherheart with the Pennsylvania Lovebirds. Um, you see these pin cushions usually found in Pennsylvania, Southeast Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia. Probably related to some of the key baskets. You see a lot of the key baskets get attributed to, this, to Virginia, but there's some marked Richmond, but these are probably related to it. Um, early to mid 1800s, great, great colors on this missing part of the bow down there and that's a little fragile but man that's a really cool thing my goal when making a purchase is to make at least 50 bucks on it i want it to be easy to ship make at least 50 dollars so that's sort of prohibits buying stuff for 20 to sell for 50 which i still do from time to time but i really want to make at least 50 bucks because you know it takes me so long to pack and ship stuff and list stuff that I don't know. It takes me just as long to sell something for 150 as it does to sell something for 40. So I'd rather sell the 150 dollar items. These are some of the purchases that didn't really fit that bill. This is fairly easy to ship. This little stool. It's like a footstool, but it's painted. It says "Best Wishes for Xmas." Has the person's initials down there, and whatever king and crown. I don't know what that is, but it's kind of cool. Made out of an old. Uh, 
ammo crate. I mean, I have old ammo crate. Easy to ship. Probably not something I can necessarily make 50 bucks on, but pretty cool. Uh, paid 30 bucks for that. I do like that. By the time you factor in shipping and everything. This, this was sort of a mistake. He was cheap enough. Had good little stick would have gone there. Had his, his arms, one of his arms and one of his legs have been glued into place, like permanently glued into place. Not sure why they would do that. You can see that right there. Got a neat neat face to it though, or neat head, neat form. Decent enough paint. Kind of cool because he was found uh, Blacksburg, Virginia, near, uh, near, that's where Virginia Tech is, if you're into college sports. So yeah, kind of a neat uh, piece of Virginia folk art, but uh, I don't know that I'll make the 50 bucks on him either. This thing, oh, I don't know why I bought this. He was cheap. Just because it's cheap doesn't make it right. I kind of liked it. My friend had this a long time ago and tried to sell it to me and I passed on it. He sold it through Crumpton. My friend Rich bought it at Crumpton. He flipped it to me at Fishersville. Paid $20 for him. Kind of, I think it's um probably a retirement gift for something. Guy must have been some sort of uh, newscaster. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of neat pop art, but was it worth it? I don't know. This thing's kind of cool. Uh, this thing's kind of cool. Homemade uh, toy banjo, guitar, six strings. I think that's a banjo. Be uh, from an old cigar box. Does not have holes, so it doesn't really make doesn't really make noise when you play it. Perfect decor for Nashville. Uh, if I do Nashville again, that'd be perfect for Nashville. Bought this Saturday morning, so the show had already been open for a full day. But I bought this from a vendor outside. It's a bird whistle. It's got decent age to it, probably from the 40s, 30s. Gonna hold this for the same client who likes the hawks see if they like this my final buy was this uh homemade crossbow i think found somewhere in the uh mountains of north carolina i believe that's what the guy said uh, appalachia type area maybe um cool thing nice early paint all square nails hair trigger missing obviously Missing this side, but kind of gives it a nice sculptural look to it. Missing the cross part of it, but all square nails, nice uh, nice surface, nice early paint. Cool thing. Okay, that was the Fisherville 2023 Spring Show. Tad disappointing. Um, there is a strategy when you set up at a show, your show is going poorly. You try to buy your way out, i.e. you buy so much good stuff that you make money on it down the road that it makes the show worth doing. Of course, whenever we buy stuff, there's some sort of cost associated with it, whether it's time, driving to an auction, gas driving to an auction, getting stuff shipped, you know, adds to the value, final value of the piece or something. But buying stuff's not easy. So when you can buy at a show, you know, there is some value to that. And of course, uh, I, I do a lot of shows. I've done shows before that are cheap that I do them primarily just to get in to buy during setup, you know. So Fisherville is not necessarily one of those shows, though. It's definitely a show where I want to make money as well as buy some stuff. This is probably uh, the most stuff I've bought there in a while. So if it all goes well, it will certainly uh, make this show uh, less bad. I don't know. Uh, it would make the show certainly okay. But uh, yeah, those the disappointing sales numbers. And um, I don't know. I don't know uh, what to take from that yet. I'll have to think about it if I... Uh, you know, what this all means in terms of did I just have an uh, unlucky show? Do I not have the right merchandise for the show? Have, you know, the years passed where I did really well? Have I like evolved into more folk art and kind of odd stuff and less into country primitive stuff? Um, I've certainly had some of the shows I've done really well there have involved me selling a lot of advertising signs. And I those are harder and harder to buy and certainly harder to buy with like able to sell to another dealer with room left on it. So if it's like a $200 sign, if I used to be able to buy it for 100, maybe I would sell it for 150 and then that person would buy it for 150 and try to sell it for 200. And it seems like now whenever I buy a sign like that, I am paying 150, so I'm trying to get to 200 and uh, not necessarily able to wholesale something like that to another dealer. So I don't know, um, 
Could it be that, uh, you know, I've changed too much for the show? Could it be that the show is changing? Could it have been just a one-off bad show? Something to do with the fact that uh, it competed against the Springfield, Ohio show? I don't know. It could be any of those things. Uh, they said the gate was good. The gate was up, maybe. So, I don't know. Um, as dealers, we don't really care about the overall gate. We care about the number of people buying, number of sales overall, and particularly our sales. Our sales are all that really matter. Uh, but, I, you know... I looked around, looking around, I think some dealers did well, some dealers did poorly. So, it, but it didn't seem like, it wasn't a situation where it seemed like everyone did great and I did poorly, so I don't know. Um, could have just been an off show. So uh, we'll see. Um, it still makes a lot of sense to do the show. The show's not that expensive. The show does get a good gate and uh, I have storage nearby. So I'll be back in the fall. Let's hope it, uh, let's hope it smokes. Peace. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I don't know why I pieced it there, but thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see like a real look at being an antiques dealer in the modern age, as well as one who is technically nomadic and does not have a permanent home base who travels from location to location throughout the year, then give my channel a like and a follow. Thanks for watching. Peace for real this time.